Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And I've been gone for a little bit, but I'm back. I wanted to take you today. We're doing a two-person interview that's actually different than any other two-person interview that I've shown on my channel. And I just want to take you with me, show you the set. So come on in, show you what we got. Okay, okay. So come on in. Um, Here's the set, obviously it's a live set. We're filming right now and uh, everybody here is doing their job. So I don't think I can show too much of the actual footage, but I'll put in a little bit of sample footage of what we got. I want to take you, show you the gear, show you the lighting setup, show you the camera placement, and a little bit of what we got going on. So first things first, I want to show you a little bit of the setup that we have as far as camera placement. So come on in this way. Sorry, we're gonna basically do this as a one take. So that's, that's what we got time for today. So we are running three cameras. A camera is our C500 Mark II. We've got kind of a crazy setup going on here. I always like running the bright tangerine cage. I've talked about that before, but it's really nice because it gives you a lot of real estate where you can mount things to. We are running the pad prompter, and this is kind of a cool little setup. The iPad is on FaceTime. So our director, Ryan Luth, can basically FaceTime the client uh, as, as they're going through and prompt them through different questions while keeping that eye line, which is kind of a nice little setup. Up top running the small HD Cine 7. I got this little Amazon power brick, maybe if you could zoom in on it, but it's like $30 and it has like every plug on it. This is kind of a janky setup here, but it is running uh, the two Sennheiser AVX wireless kits and those are continuously powered. We're doing multiple hours of interviews today, so it's nice to have everything powered in a way where I don't have to be changing batteries every five minutes. It is powered off the full frame V-mount plate with the IDX batteries. Uh, B cam, C cam, we'll talk about them. They're the exact same deal. C70, this one is not running the speed booster. The other one is running the speed booster. This one's got an RF 24 to 70. Up top, it's, and this one also has a bright tangerine cage as well as the other C70. What's great about it is it gives you so much room, like I said, to mount things to. We are running the Hollyland wireless. Do you remember the name of this one? The Hollyland something? Is it the Mars 400? I'll put it on the screen what it is right now. Anyways, we're running the Hollyland wireless. This is actually a really cool setup. The guys from Hollyland did send this out to me and I really like it a lot. I didn't know how I was gonna compare to the, Ter the Teradex systems that I usually use. And what I found is in some cases it's actually better than the Teradex. In some cases it's also worse, but what I like, it's a little more intuitive. It's got a screen on there and it's easier to connect. Jumping over to monitoring, we are running three separate monitors. So when we have all the cameras on, I'll put a shot of what that looks like. But we have the OC Megamon 15.5 monitor. This is kind of like my new favorite big production monitor. It's got all the inputs and outputs, SDI, HDMI, all the good stuff. And the best part about it is the picture is really good and it's really accurate. So you can explain to your director and client, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. You can't necessarily say that about this small HD Focus 7 and you can't say that about this Hollyland insert name here, I forgot the name of it, the Hollyland, whatever it is. The picture is a little too warm on this one and then the highlights look too blown out on this one, but this one, it looks perfect. So I really like that monitor for that reason. As far as lighting goes, it's two people and what's different about this one is it's a piece to camera. They're actually sitting right here and I'm a little taller than the other people, but they're sitting here and they're looking directly at the A camera. And so we've set up the A camera to be the main shot and then the B camera is a little bit more sidey and so that's good. And I'm lit by an Aperture 600D through a light dome too. It's a 36 inch soft box, it's boomed out over. And then we have the exact opposite lighting setup. And so on this side, it's the exact same setup. It's an Aperture 600D as well through a light dome too, boomed out over. And what's kind of cool is that it gives this sort of big wrapping light. This is really my key, but this one kind of helps wrap it across my face a little more. And it does the same thing on the opposite side. You can imagine when I'm, I'll insert a shot but this is my key light here, and then this one kind of just wraps it just a little bit more. So it's kind of a cool little effect there. One of the things we did do as well is we added in a background light. So if you actually notice, there's like a little slash of light, I'll put it on screen as well. But what's cool is it, it basically makes it so it's not just a flat gray wall, it adds kind of a cool little slash and it really breaks up the background. I'm, I'm usually looking, I've talked about this before, but I'm usually looking for contrast in the shot. Now, all that really means is, is that you have some stuff that's light, some stuff that's dark, light, dark, light, dark, kind of repeating patterns. So it's a way to create visual interest in your shot and just make your subject pop a little bit more. So your eye is naturally drawn right to their face and their face stands out. It's not like their face is right next to something else that's really bright and so it draws your eye there. So 
That's one cool thing. One cool thing that I don't like about this monitor is it always unmutes itself. So I'm going to go ahead and mute that. But other than that, let's see. What do we forget, Rob? We forgot our spotlight. I think I talked about it, but the, the background light, that's an Aperture 300D up there, and that's running through the Aperture Spotlight. I absolutely love that light. If you don't have a spotlight yet, they're expensive and it sucks to buy. However, they make a huge difference in creating visual interest in what can sometimes be not so exciting backgrounds. Last thing I wanna talk about is set design. This is a really critical thing. This set did not look like this, if you wanna jump around this way. This set did not look like this when we got here. This is Ryan, our director. If you guys don't follow Ryan's channel, I'm putting his thing on the screen right here. Ryan has an amazing channel, amazing cinematographer. He went to real also film school. Amazing cinematographer right here. <laughs> Thanks, man. So last thing I want to talk about is just basically set design. So the set didn't look like this. We basically, we wanted to create depth. And so how you create depth, one of the ways is you pull your subject off the background and you separate the background, make the background further away. That's one thing, how you get the blurry background effect, basically. So one thing we did here is we brought this lamp in that was just in a different place. And people talk about this in film sets, they'll call them practicals. It just means it's a practical light. It's not like a film set light. It's a light that's actually in the shot. What that does is it creates a little pop of light. And yes, they're tungsten, where all my other, daylight, all my other lights are daylight. They're like the cool blue, 5600. These are like 3200 but it doesn't really matter because it's not affecting my subject in a major way, but it's cool because it creates a little bit of a color contrast as well. So that's a nice thing. Also, I really love just personally, this is a personal preference, I love having green plants on a gray background. That's just something I like. There's no like film advice with that. However, yeah, I think that's it for the set. I think that's it. If you like this video, consider hitting that subscribe button. See you in the next one. Take care.